I think we have a problem right now in Counter-Strike and how we talk about the CT side and how players play the CT side. Um, because when you talk about players in the most broad terms, when people do try to describe a player's role on a team, they usually only do so through labels that apply to the C, uh, not the CT side, but the T side. They talk about players as entry players or lurkers or aggressive riflers, meaning they're at the front of the attack, or support players, which is uh, sort of a difficult term, but I think generally people think of support player as meaning the guy sort of at the back of the pack throwing utility for the leading members of the attack, right? So the CT terms, which, you know, is the CT side's half the game, and um, isn't as used. People don't use the terms that we usually use to describe um, CT positions. So I think this is a problem, and it leads to people thinking that maybe the T side's more important, or they only talk about half the game when they talk about whether a guy can be a good entry player or who should be the entry player. They're really missing out on half of the discussion, or they're uh, undervaluing the other half of the map, uh, other half of the game, the under half of the map. So let's first talk about the the current uh, CT terms, which I actually think are pretty good. I like these terms. So the current CT terms are usually people describe it in terms of dividing the sites, the two sites, into the big site and the small site, the site with more CT defenders generally and the site with less CT defenders generally. And then they'll say uh, assign a primary and a secondary um, player to each of these sites. So there's the small site primary player or the anchor player because sometimes he's left there by himself, the, sec uh, the small site secondary player who will more rotate towards a, a mid or the other site more often or will be the first one to move. There's the primary big site player, the secondary big site player, and like the, the rotating player who will be more towards the big site but can be more towards a, a middle or non-site part of the map. Or, uh, yeah, and alongside the secondary players who also will switch sites or go to the other site uh, or go to mid or whatever, uh, depending on circumstances and depending on reads and, and sound cues or wherever else. So this is how people normally conceptualize it. I think these are good terms. I think these terms all make sense. But the problem with these terms, the reason why I think these terms are not as widely adopted is not just because they're slightly more of a mouthful uh, secondary small site defender rather than lurker. I think the reason why these terms are not as adopted as highly or as much or used as much as the T side terms is because that there's a lack of consistency in map to map in these terms. Now you can talk about the T side and how it's not always true that a player is an entry player on every map or a um, lurker on every map and how that can change from map to map. I think SK with Fur and Phelps is a good example. Sometimes uh, Fur was more of the initiator and on some maps and more of it was Phelps, at least, or at least that was the conception originally. Um, but yeah, anyway, I think I think the T side terms are more consistent um, than the C T side terms because I think if you go from map to map, it's not always true that someone's always the secondary B player, or not the I don't want to say B player, the secondary small side player or the secondary uh big site player or the, always the rotating player, I think those terms can switch from map to map when, or those positions can change from map to map rather. When I wrote that article recently about Zipnix, um, I said that he was generally the small site anchor, and which is, is definitely true, but he, on some maps, say Cash, he'll play the big site, A site, and he'll, so, so he'll, and he's more of like a the, the primary guy on the A site. And you think of that as actually being like completely opposite than the primary guy on, on the small site. He's sort of set up for a site that's perhaps more high traffic or um, he's on a completely different role. But so I, I, there's that problem that there's not that great consistency, but I actually thought of a way that would describe CT players, I think better in my opinion. And that's to not talk about what they do in relation to the big or small site. I think a better way is just the normal way most people talk about uh, positions in CSGO. It's not in terms of big, small site, or secondary, primary, or how much they rotate or how little they rotate. 
It's talking about bad slot, bad, bad spots and good spots, hard spots and easy spots, uh, bitch spots or uh, yeah, good spots or uh, uh, well love spots or yeah, favorite spots. It's talking about spots in terms of whether or not they're more individually oriented or more team oriented that are really hard to hold so you can only sort of um, hold it and you need to just throw utility and back off and wait for teammates. Um, spots that are not about um, pure aim, it's more about utility and it's more about positioning. And try to talk about um, CT positions in terms of those two extremes, a spectrum, and make that spectrum from one to five. Five being the most supportive, most team-oriented spots, one being the most individually oriented, most straightforward spots. Um, so, and then going, get going, yeah, from one to five, five, four, three, two, one, four being obviously the, the second most supportive spot, the most team oriented spot and working your way down. And then you can talk about players, not in terms of whether or not there are five to one, you could do that, but you, it actually could be more helpful to talk about it over the course of the entire map pool. You can add up those numbers and say that he's, his CT uh, positional uh, score, CT uh, spot score is a 27 or a 14 or whatever it happens to be. Now you'd have to work out which spot, you know, there have to be a consensus on what's a five and what's a, a, a one on each map and figure all that out and then tally it up when you look into a player. But you have this nice number that could describe what a player is doing on the CT side better than what I think the, tr the typical formulation is. What I think the typical small site, big site, rotator, non-rotator formulation is good for, which I think is really, really good for, is talking about single maps. But I'm not sure that all, like, because players do different things on, across maps, you know, like it's not, you know, the there might not be a position that's more team oriented on the B, on the small site um, on one map, but there might it might be on that site on a different map. Like I talked about cash with uh, Zipnix on the A site. I think sometimes you play those retake set setups on the A site, and Zipnix will be the guy for Astralis. That will be like the guy puppy guarding the A site for cash, even though that's the big site. Um, so it's he's really doing the same thing. He's doing he's like playing like a five spot for them, but he's doing it on the bigger site. So I think using these terms one through five might be better, and then you can talk about it in terms of in one maybe one map a guy does play a more individually oriented spot, and one map he plays a t more team oriented spot. But instead of trying to come up with a generality, you can actually just add those numbers up, and he's like actually he's a he's a twenty. Uh, across all maps. Now you have to decide um, if you're going to include seven maps in the pool. Is a guy somewhere between a seven and a thirty-five, or you could just talk about six maps in the pool because most teams have a perma ban, so you don't really know where a guy plays on the seventh map. So you could talk about it in terms of six to thirty. But yeah, I think this might be a useful setup. And to just drive home the point to make you guys understand, if you're a little lost, what I'm talking about with these one to fives, I thought I talk about a specific map train and go ahead and give my thoughts on what I think a one is and what a, what a five is. And these are, of course, up for debate and, you know, very highly debatable. So I think a five for train would be um, the anchor position on the small site, the B inner site. Um, Zipnix, again, I'm talking about Zipnix a lot. He plays that uh, position. Kerrigan plays that position currently for FaZe. Now FaZe don't play that map a lot. Taco used to play that map. For SK, now it's Bolts that plays that map, or at least the last time I, I looked at uh, an SK game, last time I saw the map, um, was it Epicenter 2017, Bolts was playing that spot. So you see, like, the it's more supportive players are typically playing these spots, and if you think about how the spot actually plays out, you know, a lot of the times there's four A defenders, so that B guy is alone, um, or, yeah, is alone, or only has one helper who can rotate in and help him. Uh, usually, usually it's two, one to two guys on, on the inner site. So he has to watch the, the lower ramp and the upper uh, exit up by brown halls. And he has to sort of use his positioning and be very careful and just delay, maybe throw a molly on ramp or on the default plant spot to just sort of hold them out using uh, a smoke maybe to, to hold, uh, to prevent the advance on ramp as long as possible. Now, it's important to note that 
the terms that I'm not using to describe these spots, I, I should maybe said this earlier, is that I'm not using the word important or not important or kill oriented or non kill oriented. Because when you think about the, the B spot, the B site on on train, that's a spot where a lot of eco rounds, you know, because you can, you can use sort of minimal utility and get a bomb plant still on on the B side on train. You can get a lot of kills there because there's a lot of rushes on the, the eco rounds. So kills is maybe not the best um, way of formulating our importance because um, actually what I think the number four spot is on train is Ivy. So Ivy is obviously a very, very important spot because if you get control of Ivy, you have a lot of new entryways into either site. You know, it's a lot of things opens up for you as the T side. But it's a site, it's a spot rather, where you can, um, as a CT, uh, use utility and positioning to really um, hold the T's in. You can always sort of delay them and hold them up using mollies and smokes and flashes and everything. And you can switch up your positions because there's a lot of angles looking at the uh, exit from that IV server alley position, you know, that to get in, uh, that, that hallway is so narrow, you can hold it up so well. So that's a, that's a spot where it's important, um, but it's not, it doesn't lend itself to a lot of straight up confrontations because it's so narrow and there's so many, um, way, uh, different, uh, angles to look at the exit of it that, you know, it's, you don't see people just straight up rushing with five men, maybe on an A attack, one or two guys might go there or throughout the round and a longer round, people might be playing with utility and trying to slowly gain control of that area. It's a more positional, it's a trickier spot. And it's not, it's not more confrontation in a high traffic spot. So I, I'd say that's the number four spot on train. Number three spot on train, I think would be the guy who is the secondary B site defender and will be more in the middle of the A site. You can rotate between those two positions. So I guess I should also mention for four, uh, Cold Zero plays that spot for SK and you think generally, yeah, he's sort of a more supporter player. And Kerrigan, um, actually I mentioned Kerrigan before, he, uh, he used to play that for FaZe. So guys who are more supportive. Cold Zero is like a star player, but he does more supportive things for SK. And more, it's, I think it's more on the T side where SK sort of plays around him and gives him more opportunities to make plays in the mid round. But anyway, yeah. The three side, I think, the, th the three spots more that uh, secondary uh, secondary B player or the the fourth guy on A, you know, the guy who's more towards bomb train or maybe is helping out or be behind the, the guy more forward towards ladder. I think that guy, you know, because he can, he can play a big role in, in stopping the attacks on B and he can, he's right there next to the bomb planner if he's by the bomb train uh, if there's an attack on A. But usually he's smoked off on those A attacks and usually they use utility to sort of... Um, if he's more towards the connector, they try to use utility to sort of block that guy off. So it's not always conducive to... to getting just spray downs and straight up fights, but it's more conducive than I think Ivy or the the uh, primary B site player. Now I think the second most uh, individualistic, most, uh, yeah, more, uh, more star oriented spot I think is the guy who tries to hold down TCON, the right side of the site from the, the um, the CT perspective, you know, uh, T main, whatever you want to call that and uh, exit way. You know, you can hold, maybe hold that from more forward or maybe more uh, towards the back of the site, towards Ivy, and can also help out Ivy. So he's sort of um, watching a very important en entryway, um, T-Main, T-Con, that entryway, but he's also helping out the Ivy guy or can help out the Ivy guy if they're doing, an, uh, if they're attacking that way. And and going off of that point, I think the most important, uh, or not the most important, I don't want to use that term, the most uh, individualistic the most uh, firepower oriented, the most fi uh, fight oriented spot is um, the guy who's most forward on the left side of the site, usually towards ladder, or you know, he can be anywhere, he can be towards e box, or you can even be more towards TCON. But um, that guy, I think, is the I think the most important, or not the most important, the number one spot, the uh, the one guy, because he, I think, the the ladder and the TCON exits or entryways are the most um, high traffic entryways onto the A site, which is, I think, the, the, the bigger site, the more popular site to hit. Uh, because, yeah, there's just a lot of entryways. There's a lot of opportunities there. So he can shut down the uh, defense, or the offense, rather, 
uh, through individual uh, plays by spraying down, say, two guys uh, jumping down the, into uh, ladder room. Um, and if he gets those two kills, then he can turn his attention to um, the other guys ex uh, uh, entering into the site through, like, Tikon or uh, the Ivy entryway. So I think, yeah, I think that's the most... Um, Forward most, the most action oriented, the, the most star oriented spot. And guys like Fur currently or Phelps previously for SK played that spot. Um, well, Fur actually played it in two of the last three lineups in the uh, in the Bolts lineup he's playing it, or he played it uh, at uh, Epicenter. And then when he had uh, when there was FNX, he was playing that, but it was actually Phelps who was more in that area. Um, Fur could also be pretty up there too when. Um, when Phelps was on the team, um, along with Phelps. But yeah, uh, yeah. so Fur is obviously a guy you think of as being a very, yeah, that sort of player that would play that that one spot. Um, Dupree for Astralis is another guy. Uh, Rain for FaZe. So yeah, no, definitely, um, yeah, I think that's a clear, in my opinion, that's the clear number one spot. Uh, or the one spot. I don't want to say number one spot, because then, yeah, it sounds like I'm signing importance, like I said, I didn't want to do. So yeah, those are just my thoughts. I think it'd be a really interesting way to start talking about players in terms of their CT uh, positional score, their CT numerical number. Like in, he's a he's a lurker and he's a he's a 32, 35 guy on the CT side, or he's a he's an entry player and a 10 to 12 guy on the the CT side, or something like this. Um, to talk about what he sort of does on a team. I think this is sort of more useful terminology. And I think it also, after a match, say if you look at a best of three, you could say like, well, he had a CT positional score of 13, yet he had a, a large number of CT kills. That's really great. Or conversely, uh, you could talk about a guy who has a CT position or CT score of, of three or four or five, and then he's not getting a lot of CT Kills, you can easily sort of, oh, what, what, how, what, you know, he's set in a, a position to get a lot of kills, or he's set in a position that's um, very high traffic, and he's not uh, doing very well. He's not doesn't have high ADR, didn't have a lot of impact. Um, what happened there? So this, I think, is a very easy way. Just give me a number is an easy way to um, to talk about and to describe what someone's doing on the CT side.